Hi, my name's Neil Watkins and I run something called Think IT. Think IT is a DfE recommended procurement framework for ICT in education and as a result I get to talk to hundreds of schools every year about the challenges they face when buying, implementing and using ICT and I thought it would be helpful to share some of that with you today. Before we get into the five big challenges though, it's important to understand the IT landscape in which we're operating. I describe it as the tectonic plates of technology shifting because we are being moved from on-premise licensing to cloud-based licensing whether we like it or not. And there are three big indicators of that that I will touch on just now. The first is the DfE Cloud Guidance issued in 2016. Uh, not many schools have read it, so I'll summarise it for you. It basically says there are big savings to be made potentially from moving to the cloud. However, in order for schools to benefit from those, they need good connectivity, good infrastructure, and their people need to be ready, which for lots of schools actually is a big challenge. The second indicator of the tectonic plate shifting is the DfE's Memorandum of Understanding with Microsoft. Again, published in 2016, what it says is that on-premise licenses are being increased in price from the 1st of July 2018. And to mitigate those price rises, effectively, you have to move to the cloud. So you're taking advantage of Office 365 and Azure uh, from Microsoft. And the third big indicator is the rise of Chromebooks and Windows 10S devices. Four or five years ago, everybody wanted iPads, but there have seen to be some limitations on the use of those, and people feel that students need to learn better keyboard and mouse skills, and they're moving to these uh, more uh, interactive devices. The first of these big procurement challenges that we see time and time again is around compliance understanding the law. Um, any public sector organisation spending public money needs to follow a set of rules which are defined in legislation uh, and effectively if you're spending more than £164,000 over the lifetime of a contract which by the way if you're a large school and you're taking out a fully managed ICT service and refreshing the infrastructure etc you will definitely breach that amount of money. If you are doing that then you need to do one of two things you either need to go out to tender uh, or you need to uh, use a DFE procurement framework and I found it incredible recently when I was at a, a head teachers meeting in the northwest of England where out of 11 around the table four of them did not know of this uh, requirement and that's indicative of uh, another problem that we see with with compliance is that heads often delegate down to an assistant head or a deputy head or indeed a teacher who just happens to have shown some uh, interest in computers in the past uh, they delegate down responsibility for procurement uh, and the, the real challenge is that these people don't have those skills either the third big problem that we see around compliance uh, is linked to, to fraud and theft um, unfortunately, uh, the financial freedoms that academisation has brought uh, has uh, led to a rise in, in fraud and theft, um, but also not just from within the school, but from external threats such as phishing attacks. Uh, we recently heard of a school that had a business manager uh, received an email that they thought was from the head teacher um, and paid over twelve thousand uh, pounds even though the head teacher was in the next room and they didn't go next door to question it because it looked like uh, a genuine email uh, they just paid the money and those kind of phishing attacks are going to become more prevalent because hackers see schools as soft targets the second uh, problem we see a lot of is around complexity. Uh, schools understanding uh, what really is required for ICT uh, these days because the pace of technological change is frightening for many. Uh, schools just don't have the technical expertise in-house to keep up with everything from connectivity, cyber security, email, uh, network infrastructure, equipment uh, and I would argue how could they possibly because it is so complex that you do do need uh, external help because no one person and I would indeed argue no one company has all the skills required uh, in order to meet the needs of uh, a school uh, or a multi academy trust today and one of the challenges that we see a lot is around efficacy 
does the technology actually work? Does it do what the salesman has actually told you? Um, or will you be left uh, holding the baby as the uh, shiny suited salesman uh, drives off into the distance uh, in their Porsche? Linked to complexity then is capability, experience and expertise uh, from a procurement perspective. Lots of schools, most schools I would argue, don't have the experience in order to scope, to specify, to go out to tender, to evaluate responses, to negotiate deals, uh, to manage contracts, to manage implementation and manage service level agreements. That is a huge range of skills that schools just often do not have within house. Uh, and that leads to reactive uh, or poor decision making. Uh, and a couple of simple examples, um, we often see schools buying things reactively because something's gone wrong, a server's gone down or got broken and they feel like they've got no choice but to, to replace it. Um, or they end up with some money left at the end of the year and they end up um, buying something because uh, they can. And a simple example recently of a school that bought 30 iPads, um, however, when they got them to the school they found they couldn't put them on the network because the network infrastructure wasn't configured correctly and they ended up sitting in a cupboard for quite some period of time uh, and what a complete waste of money it ended up being. Speaking of money, uh, the next big challenge obviously is cash. Uh, most schools are feeling the squeeze right now, uh, but the challenge is many schools, because they don't understand IT, they see it as a luxury uh, not as a utility. But I would argue quite strongly that you can't run an organization the size of a school without having good quality IT infrastructure. The real challenge, however, is how do you know you're getting value for money for the precious pounds that you've got? Uh, and that's obviously, uh, and I would say this, wouldn't I, where things like uh, DFE recommended procurement frameworks come in. And the final big challenge we come up against time and time again is confidence. Uh, who can you trust? There are a lot of people out there trying to sell to your schools every single day. If you're not getting hundreds of emails, you're a receptionist, a business manager certainly is, they're getting lots of phone calls. And how do they know who they can trust uh, when things go wrong? And I say when and not if deliberately because it's IT and there are people involved. Uh, IT sometimes breaks, things go wrong, things get upgraded, um, and that's just life, it's a fact. And people do dumb things. They do th dumb things either because they're being malicious, i.e. they're trying to steal from you, or it's students trying to hack into your systems, uh, or they do dumb things because they don't understand, they don't have the training or the knowledge uh, that they need in order to make things work. So when things go wrong, who are you going to call? And I'll share with you a little story of how I believe uh, things should be in the sector. Uh, one of our schools uh, had um, implemented a new system from us uh, in the September. And in the November, uh, the head teacher came into school early one morning uh, to find the system down because of some changes on the Janet network, which is the education uh, infrastructure uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, he made a call at 7.30 in the morning, outside of usual hours, uh, to the project manager that had implemented the solution, just as the first Ofsted inspector arrived in the car park. Um, there was a flurry of activity, there was none of this, it's not my job, you'll have to wait till 8 o'clock, it's not within the SLAs. The problem was sorted by 10 past 8 before anybody else knew there was a problem. And when I rang the head teacher at 4 o'clock to make sure he was happy and everything was okay, um, he didn't even mention the fact that there had been an outage. He wanted to tell me that the school had got a good rating and that was a massive improvement down to him and his team. And that's exactly how support in IT should be. So those are the five big challenges that we see time and time again. Uh, if you'd like to share any stories or you'd like to get in touch, please contact me at neil.watkins, N-E-I-L-W-A-T-K-I-N-S, at think-it.org.uk. Thank you very much for listening.